You want to do an intro? What kind of intro? Do we need an intro for this episode? Or are we just going to, I feel like we kind of just rambled on into it without a clear, hey, welcome. Well, that's what the show. title is for. Well, we've never oh, that's done an intro true. like that. We've always do- dove, dived, dived right Dive. in. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Never mind. tough time coming up with some material for this <laughs> okay <laughs> i even polled my roommate and uh she didn't have a lot <laughs> really so she, she said my go ahead said, my product managers are really awesome and we don't step on each other's toes and we kind of have a good clear delineation and we were talking about this yesterday for a little while so that being said yeah maybe we're the <laughs> one who's wrong <laughs> No, it's the children. <laughs> well, it's, it's whoever asked the question. I want to get her on and be like, so what kind of beef are you having? And yeah. what's, what's your problem? <laughs> what's your problem? Yeah. It could be a culture thing. You know, I mean, we should, you know, people come from different backgrounds. Like if you got, if you're a designer and then you become a product manager, let's say, uh, I could see you yeah. having a little, <laughs> well, or you don't, or, or you, you still oh. think you're a designer. You kind of forget what your new job is. Yeah. But what's the difference really? I mean, you know, you've got different priorities. Forget, forget and your focus, titles, but your focus. focus should be different. If you, if you're a product manager, in my opinion, your focus is on products, not how they all fit together, what your ROI is, what your marketing strategy is. You're not necessarily focused on designing screens. Not to say you don't have valuable input and opinions, mm-hmm. but that's not where your strength is anymore. That's not why you're at that company. Yeah. And, you know, I can't help but look at this from my background's perspective, where having been a product manager, albeit just for a little bit, the way I've been a designer has been more like a product manager who's also responsible for some screen work. And that's when I, when I look at people who are designers and they're like, I'm, I'm pretty happy moving pixels around. I don't care what the ROI is. I'm like, why are you doing this work? I don't understand that. Well, and that goes back to setting expectations and having job descriptions because <laughs> some people are totally comfortable yeah. doing that and that's what they should do as long as they have other members of their team that are looking at the other stuff. Yeah. Because people have different strengths and different interests. Personally, I don't have a ton of stories around you know conflict with product managers as far as overstepping. The one I can remember is it comes down to design and evaluating design and Mm -hmm. understanding how to measure good design and competing metrics as far as how do we decide this is this is the design we want to go forward with and you know i I worked with this one product manager who and it was one of my big pet peeves in design people in general is he was a click counter and any screen or design anyone on my team did it was well how many clicks is this going to take (laughs) right yeah and which is going to can we come up with fewer clicks he was he it's all about clicks which is where i came up with my rebuttal of what if we brought a screen with zero clicks <laughs> would that be the best design <laughs> right would that be obviously the best yes of course <laughs> right it's everything's on one page you know and i've talked to people and that's something that's come up is yeah they don't you know they have different priorities so sometimes it goes back to aesthetics versus functionality or usability oh it's got to look pretty we don't necessarily focus so much on whether people can complete a task. And so I've heard that leading to some friction of a product manager kind of dictating design to kind of skew it in one direction of, Mm -hmm. you know, what they see as a, to your point, maybe more sellable (laughs) because it looks prettier. Yeah. We'll make it, we'll make it work later. Right. Let's make it look good now so that we can, we can, we're in a growth mode and we need customers. What I hear when I hear that is you need account you need people to sign up you don't care if they use it you just need a number of accounts it's right. like you know, looking... your meetup has a thousand members right? right but only 20 people ever show up they're looking for money coming in but not money staying in <laughs> right yeah there's no retention involved in that discussion and i'm not a business person maybe that's valid or you know it's a valuable strategy i don't know but i think you're right that is something that people do yeah, it's a valuable strategy if your goal is on paper growth. 
if your goal right. is to produce a quality product that people are going to use and enjoy using and find value out of, and no. <laughs> and I would, I would hope that, yeah, the strategy, if it's growth is, all right, get them in and then we'll fix it really, really, really soon. <laughs> Not this, oh, we'll fix it with a five-year plan. People don't stick around for five years. No. The other one I've heard recently, I was talking to someone, it was the, the classic, <laughs> the classic, I don't even know what you call it, the classic mistake that product people make is they design it for themselves. I know these people, I've been in their job or I've talked to so many of them that I'll tell you how to design it because I know I'm the expert and they don't want testing. They don't want any sort of validation from, from research or actual customers. I know what works. Trust me. That's why I'm the product manager. I'm the expert in the domain right. and just here's what to do. To the point where this person I was talking with was like talking to their product owner and kind of explaining how to word requirements and use cases in the to include the user and the customer in their thinking. And they would just even game that and they would word it in a way that it was like still about them. Let's say I'm a customer. <laughs> As a me, I want to. Right, right. And so that's another place where I've heard recently of like product people kind of stepping out of their, their lane, if you will, to yeah. kind of infringe on the designer's or UX person's authority. And One of the comments to Tracy's question on the Twitter thread was product managers and stakeholders coming to the table with solutions for designers to implement rather than here's the problem opportunity. What can we do about this? Here's what the market says. Right. Yeah. I still struggle with why aren't you, not you, but. <laughs> but what did I do? <laughs> but you. <laughs> <laughs> why aren't you, as a designer, curious about this stuff, the business side of things? I've, I've never understood designers who aren't at least curious about it. Maybe that isn't, you know, where they put their focus. And, and partly they don't put their focus because they're inundated with design work to do. To me, I look at design work as you're, you're making business choices. Right. And why you don't have a fundamental understanding of what your choices do, how they impact, and how they improve or disimprove? Unimprove. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it just boggles my mind that there are people who call themselves designers who don't care about that. This is strange. I was just having a conversation a few weeks ago with a client about this, and they were telling me they were having trouble finding full-time UX designers that they, they trusted and, and liked. And they were asking me the kind of the same question, like how come they, they don't think to look at the bigger picture? Yeah. And I said, you know, guessing, because I haven't done research or talked to a lot of people, it's, it's partly, I would guess, an element of experience where they haven't, learn by their mistakes where being short-sighted mm. can miss opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I'll say they're younger, not so much in age, but in experience or less mature in experience within the world of user experience design, where they're just missing those. They don't see the gaps and they're yeah. so laser focused on, like you said, designing a page or a screen or something that they don't pick their head up because they're not being taught that in whatever classes they go to or, you know, whatever training they've had. So I think that's two of the reasons, but yeah, I don't know, but I've heard that too. Another reason, and, and I, it's a valid reason, but also not a valid reason <laughs> is, and I'll explain, is designers who work at a large enough company where they are required to specialize and just do their thing. And they've got enough of that thing to keep them busy all week that it's hard to, to look beyond what they've been asked to do. I still <laughs> wonder about that, but I also understand it, right? It's, you work at a, in enterprise level, you've got plenty of stuff to do often that you don't have time to go and to basically be a junior product manager. And I think that's it, is that those large organizations have good people, hopefully if the company is doing well, good people <laughs> yeah. in those roles right. where they're focused on the longer term strategy and the cross feature, um, collaboration. The designers don't have to worry about that. Nothing's going to go wrong if they miss that because they've got other people looking out. To the point of the this show's title. Is there, there a title? Are, <laughs> is there a title? There are a lot of uh, product managers who are great to work with and who really know what they're doing and who let design do the thing they're good at. And also who, when they're, they as product managers are out talking to customers, don't say things like, 
hey, if I made an app that made your life better, would that make your life better? <laughs> Which I've you would seen. use this, right? You would, you would yeah. use this? <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you sign this to say that you'll use it? Um, yeah. <laughs> Give you $50 participation money. <laughs> You're supposed to be using this. Right. Yeah. To, to the point of the show's title, you know, we can do better. There's always room for doing better. So it, yes, there are a lot of product managers and designers out there who, who do care about the business side of things and who are doing their jobs well. There are also a lot of people out there who are not for a var variety of reasons, but even let's talk ones, about them. Let's talk about those bastards. <laughs> no, there's still always room for improvement. I think is, is the thing. Sure. Are there any other specific things you've run across where the line is blurred between product and designer and it causes conflict? For me, I think the biggest issue working with product management really kind of does come down to the, I'm solving this for me, or they just don't know how to ask questions properly. That's huge. You know, and I and no even one designer has, said that. Yeah. What was that? Even designers and researchers have oh, absolutely. that problem. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I, I know you and I have been on, on things together where I've said something in a way to a participant and I've thought, oh, crap, I can't believe I phrased it like that. So, you know, we can do better. Yep. But, you know, there's a lot of product managers out there who just, not even just product managers, it's everybody. But since we're just talking about them, there's a lot of product managers who are just like, well... I've got to ship features. We're supposed to be releasing new stuff every two weeks or every six weeks or every six months or whatever. And we can't break that cadence. We have to keep our velocity. We have to keep shipping. Right. And the obsession with that over the obsession with providing value to the customer, to me, I think that that's a huge problematic area. Along those lines, I'll throw in another one you reminded me of, and this isn't so much as designer versus product manager, but just product manager gripe, I suppose, is the keep up with the checkboxes. We used to call it like, oh, the competition has this feature. We oh, have yeah, to have yeah. that feature. Yeah. Not so much understanding of whether your customers want it or whether it fits in with your whole strategy. It's right. we have to tick the same boxes. I remember even back when I was at State Farm, so anywhere from like 2000 to 2006, wherever, wherever the Venn diagram of Amazon existed <laughs> and this statement being made <laughs> was literally in a meeting. Let's just do what Amazon does. Cause I really like the way they handle this. And I don't even remember what it was, but I remember right. that statement. And even back then being a young upstart designer, I knew to go, but our customers are not buying books because back then that's all Amazon sold. Kids. Right. Read your history books. <laughs> That's right. I just got I just got an Amazon email saying buy buy tires for your car. <laughs> what? Buy health insurance. I thought you just sold books. That's right. It's it's not that that comes from from product management specifically, but it's to me it's anybody who's on the side of of business. And and I do think that there is. I don't think there should be, but I think there's a delineation between the people who are on the side of business and the people who are on the side of implementing the solution to support the business, right? Ideally, they're all together. They're all, and, and the business is to serve the customer. And I get that. And to kind of give a little counterpoint is you see a successful business, the natural inclination is to follow them. Right, yeah. Like, wow, they're doing things right. They have great user experience. Mm -hmm. Why not do what they're doing? And that's where the UX person can educate a business person or a product person. Right. Like you just kind of explain, like, yes, they're doing great things for their business, for their customers. Maybe we can take some of what they've learned and apply it, but just copying it is not the way to go. I get the, the seduction, if you will, <laughs> of, of doing what the, the number one you know, competitor is doing, but that's not the way you, that's not what you win for your customers. For me, the answer is always going to be your team. You know, if it's if you are a, a product manager and you have a team of designers, developers, QA, writers, whatever, if your company is organized like that, your team is responsible for delivering value to the customer and by extension value to the business. Anybody who is is focused on the we just need to ship features, I don't 
really understand that I can't condone it. <laughs> I will not condone it. I will not condone it. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think I, I might have mentioned this on the show before, but you know, that that stint that I had as a product manager, I was told indirectly, but directly by the the VP of product that we're shipping things of value to the customer. And I took that seriously. And when I presented the plan for doing that, I was told, no, you can't do that. You have to ship features because we were going to skip a release except for major bug fixes. And we weren't going to ship new features. I didn't get in trouble exactly, but I kind of got in trouble for, for going down that path. And I condoned it and dis discondoned it enough. <laughs> <laughs> and also the, the opportunity at NGEN came along that I was like, smell you later, because I can't work in an environment that doesn't care about its customers. Maybe I'm the one who's wrong. Maybe it is me. <laughs> Maybe it's you. Maybe no, it's, it's the children. <laughs> it's the, it is the children. <laughs> we veered a little bit on this one. Yeah, that's what we do. That's all right. That's we all right. veer. In my head, there's always like a clear, again, just in my head, it doesn't make it to the video all the time. It's like a, hey, let's get started. <laughs> I think it's kind of a mix. I think it's yeah. sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but. That's cool. No, that was good. I think we stayed close enough to the topic that it was. Yeah, or we whatever. just go for it anyway. And sometimes, well, you know. Let's go for it. Go for it. This is, yep. this is what people with hundreds of podcast episodes do. It doesn't always. No, and I like that almost better because it was just more natural and yeah, conversational. The only other thing that I would want to say about this topic, product managers, bring your designers who know how to do research or your researchers with you when you're out there gathering information from clients. Good call. Rely on them. Not all of them are terrible. <laughs> That's right. Right. You're the expert in the domain, but they're the expert at getting the information. Right. Yeah. And to me that that's what makes an excellent partnership between, you know, quote unquote design and I'm including research in that mm -hmm. and, and product management is it really should be a partnership. Yep. That's the word I was going to use too. I agree. Yeah. I condone that word. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I also condone it. <laughs> My name is Matthew Oliphant and I approve this message. Goodbye everybody. Goodbye everybody. <laughs> All right, good show, people, good show. <laughs>